Israel takes down Yahya Sinwar with tank and sniper fire. Join me as I dive into the details of how Israel executed a complex operation to take down Yahya Sinwar using tank and sniper fire. Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, has been a key figure in the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. As the founder of Hamas's military wing, Sinwar has been responsible for orchestrating numerous attacks against Israel, making him a high-priority target for the Israeli military. On October 17, 2024, Israel announced the elimination of Yahya Sinwar, a political and military leader of Hamas. This shocking event occurred three months after the assassination of the previous leader, Ismail Haniyeh. Yahya Sinwar was one of the most mysterious and important leaders of Hamas, marking a pivotal moment in the group's history and its conflict with the Israel Defense Forces over the past year. In this video, I will explain how the Israeli military operation in Gaza unfolded, leading to the death of one of Hamas's last major historical leaders, and how this event might affect the rescue of hostages and the lives of Palestinians in Gaza. Yahya Ibrahim Hassan al-Sinwar was born on October 29, 1962, in the Khan Yunus refugee camp in southern Gaza. He studied at the Islamic University of Gaza, where he led the institution's Islamic bloc. In 1982, he was first arrested in Israel, though he was released a few days later. That same year, he was detained again and sentenced to six months in prison for security activities against Israel. After his release in 1985, Sinwar founded the al Maj Security Agency, tasked with pursuing Israeli collaborators in Gaza. His organization became a key force in controlling Israeli espionage, eventually leading to him spending 23 years in Israeli prisons. Throughout his life Sinwar kept a low profile allowing him to avoid several Israeli assassination attempts, though he is believed to have survived six of them. He reappeared publicly in 2022 on Al Jazeera's program. The Israelis considered him the mastermind behind significant operations, such as the attack on a military base in Rafah and the prisoner exchange agreement involving the Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit. Sinwar was the leader behind Hamas's attacks on October 7, 2023, known as Al-Aqsa Storm to Palestinians and Black Saturday to Israelis. After Ismail Haniyeh's death in August 2024, Sinwar was elected Hamas's political leader, a position he held until his elimination on October 17, 2024. This event marks a turning point in the conflict, and we will now see how it took place. On October 17, around 10 a.m., an Israeli soldier from the Bizla Brigade spotted a suspicious figure in the Tel Al Sultan area of Rafah, Gaza. Israeli forces began advancing slowly, and by 3 p.m. they saw three Hamas fighters moving in a building, accompanied by a fourth individual believed to be Sinwar. At that moment, a Merkava tank fired at the building, severely wounding Sinwar. Although he attempted to knock down an Israeli reconnaissance drone with a stick, an Israeli sniper shot him in the head, killing him. Sinwar was well prepared for combat, wearing a bulletproof vest, carrying a Kalashnikov-type rifle, a grenade, and other personal items, a Glock 19 pistol, captured by Hamas during an operation in 2018 was found near his body. We should note that Israeli soldiers were surprised to discover that the man killed was Yahya Sinwar, as he was not their primary target. Israeli Chief of Staff Herzi Halevi stated that they were unaware Sinwar was there, making his death an unexpected casualty. To confirm his identity, the Israel Defense Forces conducted dental and DNA tests on the recovered body, confirming it was Yahya Sinwar, thanks to records collected during his 23 years in prison. Chief of Staff Herzi Halevi, along with ISA Director Ronan Barr and other senior Israeli officials, visited the site where Sinwar was killed that same day. During their visit, Halevi stated, This is our professionalism, our determination. A year later, we settle scores with Sinwar. With Yahya Sinwar's death, Israel has eliminated both of Hamas's top political bureau leaders in less than three months. Ismail Haniyeh was killed during a visit to Iran, and now Sinwar. This operation is part of an Israeli campaign that has been targeting key Hamas leaders, both politically and militarily. Other high-profile casualties include, on October 31, 2023, Ibrahim Biari, commander of Hamas's Central Battalion was killed. 
he oversaw military operations in northern Gaza. On January 2, 2024, Saleh al-Aruri, a senior Hamas leader and founding commander of its military wing, died in a missile strike in Beirut. Al-Aruri directed operations in the West Bank and managed the group's financial networks. On March 10, 2024, Marwan Issa, deputy commander of Hamas's military wing and one of the masterminds behind the October 7 attacks, died in an airstrike on a tunnel complex in Gaza. On July 13, 2024, Mohammed Dave, another architect of the October 7 attacks, was reportedly killed in a strike in southern Gaza. Despite Hamas claiming he survived, no trace of him has been seen since. On July 31, 2024, Ismail Jilla, chairman of Hamas's board of trustees, was assassinated in Tehran during an official visit. The situation in the region has been incredibly volatile, with tensions between Israel and Hamas continuing to escalate. Sinwar's role in Hamas has made him a major threat to Israel's national security, and his actions have led to widespread violence and instability in the region. The threat posed by Sinwar and Hamas is very real, and Israel has been working tirelessly to counter their aggressive actions. With Sinwar at the helm, Hamas has become increasingly brazen in their attacks, pushing Israel to take drastic measures to protect its citizens. The conflict has been ongoing for years and it seems there's no end in sight. The stakes are higher than ever, and Israel knows it must take a strong stance against Hamas's aggression. As the leader of Hamas, Sinwar has been able to evade capture for years, but his luck was about to run out. Israel's military had been gathering intel on Sinwar's movements, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. That moment came when Israeli forces launched a massive operation to take down the Hamas leader. The operation was a complex one, involving tank and sniper fire to precision target Sinwar. Israeli forces had to be incredibly careful, as they knew Hamas would stop at nothing to protect their leader. The operation required precision, skill and strategy, but Israel's military was up to the task. The Israeli military has some of the most advanced weaponry in the world, and they were determined to use it to take down Sinwar. Tanks were deployed to provide cover fire while snipers were positioned to take out Sinwar and any other high-priority targets. The operation was a testament to Israel's military prowess, as they were able to execute the takedown with precision and speed. The use of tank and sniper fire was a deliberate choice, as it allowed Israeli forces to target Sinwar while minimizing collateral damage. The operation was a huge success and Israel had finally taken out one of its most wanted enemies. The moment when Yahya Sinwar was targeted was a pivotal one in the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Israel had finally taken out one of the most significant threats to its national security, and Hamas was left reeling. The aftermath of the operation saw widespread celebrations in Israel, as citizens felt a sense of relief and gratitude towards their military. Hamas, on the other hand, was left to pick up the pieces and regroup, their plans for future attacks temporarily derailed. The operation had sent a clear message to Hamas. Israel would not tolerate their aggression and would take whatever measures necessary to protect its citizens. The event marked a significant turning point in the conflict, as Israel had finally taken out one of Hamas's top leaders. The repercussions of the operation will likely be felt for months to come, as both sides regroup and reassess their strategies. Israel's military has proven once again that it's a force to be reckoned with, and Hamas knows it can't take them lightly. With Sinwar's death, many analysts suggest that the most likely candidate to assume Hamas's political leadership is Khaled Mashal, who has a long history with the organization. However, both he and Osama Hamdan, another potential successor, lack military experience, raising questions about who will take over military leadership in Gaza. Israel now faces several strategic options. 1. Escalate military pressure. Launch a massive military offensive in Gaza, though this would endanger the lives of the 97 hostages and the Palestinian population. 2. Appeal to the people of Gaza. Convince them that Gaza's future depends on the return of the hostages, though this option seems unlikely given the current situation. 3. Offer immunity and rewards. Propose a deal to the remaining Hamas leaders to free the hostages in exchange for immunity and protection. Israel will have to carefully weigh these options. U.S. President Joe Biden congratulated Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sinwar's elimination and expressed support for advancing the release of the hostages. That's all for now. 
If you want to support the channel, consider getting a membership. You can see the available options by clicking the join button below this video. Your support is optional, but greatly appreciated. Until next time, I wish you an excellent day.